Hello again, rail fans. In this episode, we're going to explore how CSX double-tracked one of its most important railroads in the state of Georgia, with not much rail and very little construction. But first, got a little thank yous to take care of here, back there on the fence. Two new signs. First is this one from Spike Mancuso out of Sharpsville, Pennsylvania. I've never seen one like it anywhere. I wish more railroads would use these to set people straight about those tracks that they think are unused. Thank you very much to Spike. Much appreciated there. Also, that 45 mile an hour sign back there, that reportedly came off the Atlantic coastline somewhere near Callahan, Florida. It's got plenty of battle wear on it, so I guess that's why they replaced it. This one is purportedly authentic Florida Railroadiana. It's from Lamar Wilds of Fernandina Beach, Florida and it's very much appreciated. Thanks very much to both you guys for the new fence decorations. Okay, our story today is about a railroad bringing new life to a one train a day branch line. CSX began the project in 2022. They finished it in first quarter of 2023, and it seemed like it was a pretty smart move. Now, I don't get around to the answer until about four and a half minutes deep into this video. So for you folks who are just looking for the, the answer on this, you can skip over the whole setup and go into about four and a half minutes. But for those of you who are real rail fans, I trust you'll sit there and watch the whole thing. Here we go. The executives call it network fluidity. That's fancy PowerPoint corporate speak for keeping the trains moving. This is CSX's Brunswick subdivision, a lonely, barely used piece of dark territory railroad in South Georgia. No sidings, no signals, and only about two trains a day, give or take. Part of the early plant system as the Brunswick and Western Railroad, it ran from the Atlantic Ocean at Brunswick westward to Waycross, through Tifton, and on to Albany, Georgia. The Brunswick sub was in slow decline until sometime in 2022, when it became a star reborn. Somebody at CSX discovered it might be partially an answer to their prayers for network fluidity. Nahunta, Georgia, a quiet town in the middle of South Georgia's pine forest country. For CSX, Nahunta is where two subdivisions cross at grade. There's a single connection track at the Diamond, but it's mostly used to park on track equipment during maintenance work. There's a team track on the Brunswick sub, downtown, but again, not very busy. Nehuda comes to life when one of the CSX freights or Amtrak trains pass through on the A-line. This is IO 37. A few Tropicana empties and a whole bunch of intermodal container and trailer traffic. He's out of Pinoca Yard in Charlotte, headed for Duval Ramp in Jacksonville. Waycross, Georgia is one of CSX's largest classification yards and handles nearly everything to and from Florida and traffic to and from the Northeast, New Orleans, Memphis, and Chicago. This is M515, manifest freight arriving from Nashville, Tennessee. Today, he's got a bad order steel coil car riding on a TTX flat car with its wheel sets removed. A little farther back, two air-powered side dump cars, often used to dump heavy riprap beside the track. First time I can remember seeing these. Those and the two plus miles of other cars of M515 will be cut into blocks classified and added to outbound trains going all over the region. 515 is coming into Waycross off the Fitzgerald Sub, the main line that runs north by northwest out of Waycross to Cordell and Manchester, where it splits off to either Atlanta or Birmingham, Nashville, and Chicago. Getting trains across that territory is not too difficult. 
There are long passing sidings and multiple long sections of double track. But going north by northeast out of Waycross isn't so easy. The northern half of the Jessup subdivision that runs between Waycross and Jessup is largely unimproved trackage since the SEL days. In those 35 miles, there are three sidings, but all of them less than 8,300 feet. Tough to pass 12,000-foot-long trains in the age of precision scheduled railroading. But someone at CSX saw a solution already existent and easily implemented. Right in downtown Waycross is Brunswick Junction, where the Brunswick sub peels off of the Jessup sub and heads east for 51 miles to Brunswick. It's that Brunswick sub we told you about at the beginning. At 22 miles out, it intersects the CSX North-South A-Line, named the Nahunta sub. The town here is also called Nahunta. <laughs> what are the odds of that? Now, if a connection were made on the northwest quadrant of the diamond at Nahunta, Trains departing Waycross to the northeast could run out the Brunswick line, make a left turn at Nahunta, and go north on the A-Line 28 miles to Jessup. It adds about 15 miles more than taking the Jessup side, but now you effectively have a double-track main on Waycross's northeast entrance. And the only thing you really had to build was a 1,500-foot connection track at the Nahunta Diamond. Network fluidity. Track engineers did the design in record time, and construction commenced in December 2022. The connection track was completed in early 2023. CSX simply made a cut through vacant property on the northwest corner of the diamond, built a solid roadbed, laid track, and installed power switches and signals. And in very short order, the new Nahunta connection added a second main line to Waycross's route to the Atlantic coast and the northeast. Trains like M410 and its crew are the benefactors. In early April 2023, the Nahunta connection was in the final stages of construction, so the track speed was still 10 miles an hour. But M410 got to depart Waycross without having to wait on incoming southbounds on the Jessup sub. This will help crews get to their away from home terminals faster, get them back home faster, and reducing outlaws, the term for crews reaching their maximum hours in a single shift. Moving from the A-line southward and turning west, we see how the connection was built. Just four months earlier, this was woods. CSX made the new roadbed, raised to ensure good drainage, and created a land bridge over this low ground. A late morning intermodal coming out of Waycross takes the new connection. Now this runaround will not solve all of Waycross's PSR problems, but it does serve as a 48 mile long pass track that will keep trains moving. And that's the name of the game, network fluidity. Building the connection track in Nahunta was all CSX technically had to do to make this idea happen. But in order to make it work really well, some other things were needed, like signals. They put new ones in on both ends of the connection track at Nahunta, but the Brunswick main line needed some new things as well, like new rail in places. At a crossing seven miles west of Nahunta, new 136-pound rail is going in, continuous welded rail in lengths of several hundred feet. To keep the crossing open for vehicles, the pavement has been cut and trenched to allow the rail to be buried on the crossing until it's installed. When they're ready to put the rail onto the ties, they'll dig it out and repair the pavement. Three miles further west of there is the little town of Hoboken, a farming and forestry community. The major business in town is the Varn Lumber Mill. CSX construction forces are working here as well, installing new rail and a new turnout for the storage track here. When that 136-pound track goes in, the old turnout will no longer fit, so this new one is going in. Since there are no passing sidings on the Brunswick sub, you have to have at least one side track for emergencies when trains get a bad order car, which is some kind of breakdown in the running gear. Or in Hoboken's case, also to park chip hoppers for the Varn Lumber Mill or like today, to park on-track maintenance equipment. By the looks of this machinery, they are rehabilitating this entire segment of the Brunswick sub. 
The other improvement to the Brunswick sub is signals. For decades, this has been non-signal dark territory. But as part of this upgrade, CSX is reportedly installing signals on this entire segment of the sub. This will improve fluidity, especially if they start running trains one behind another out here. Fourteen miles west of Hoboken is the business end of all this, Waycross, Georgia. As the Brunswick line comes into Waycross, it passes over the city drainage canal on a creosote wood bridge. M410 is part of the first group of trains to use the new Nahanti connection. 410 is mixed manifest traffic from Rice Yard here in Waycross to Selkirk Yard, New York. Along the way, he'll make pickups and drop-offs at Rocky Mount, North Carolina, Richmond, Virginia, Baltimore, Maryland, and Ellesmere, Delaware. The wooden bridge is interesting to us rail fans for its historic value. This is how rail bridges were constructed everywhere for decades. Less expensive than concrete or steel, and apparently pretty resilient. But if the Nehanta connection idea pays off, it's likely that concrete or steel will replace the wood bridge in the future. This is Brunswick Junction, where the Brunswick sub joins the Jessup sub for the approach to Rice Yard. A local is coming in from Jessup. This is another aspect that will be aided by the Nehanta connection. There are several customers on the North Jessup sub who get regular switching service. Running northbound freights on the Nahanta side versus the Jessup side will keep the railroad moving. The southeastern line in and out of Waycross is not really a problem. This is M442, overnight freight service out of Tampa that runs via Wildwood, Baldwin, Callahan, Folkestone, and into Waycross. Running trains in both directions on that route is not an issue because large segments of it are double tracked and there are plenty of big passing sidings on the single track segments. 442 was held out here for a while this morning because Rice Yard didn't have room for him yet. At South Waycross, the very southern end of the Waycross terminal, crew changes happen. An ethanol train bound for Tampa has stopped here to get a new crew. I didn't get the train symbol, but he's likely out of Chicago. These trains often have run-through power from CP, CN, or BNSF. Also in the crew van is the conductor for this train, M457, doubling out of Rice Yard, and with his conductor now aboard, he's ready for the night run to Taft Yard in Orlando. The next day, I'm back up at Brunswick Junction in downtown Waycross. It's lunchtime, and I-125 out of Memphis, Tennessee, has stopped at Rice Yard to swap crews and pick up more cars. They've already pulled past the yard switch and are now shoving back onto their new cut. The conductor, deep down in the yard, is watching the bottom of the train as the engineer makes the move. 
125 comes out of Memphis and works Radnor Yard in Nashville, Boyle's Yard in Birmingham, and apparently now Rice Yard in Waycross on his way to Southover Yard in Savannah. When he gets next to the old ACL passenger depot, he'll stop and wait for the outbound crew. While stopped here, I-125 will block two downtown crossings in Waycross, but there are enough flyovers and underpasses on other streets to keep the vehicle traffic moving. The new crew arrives and the swap is made. At 12.51, he finally pulls out for Jessup and Savannah. Notice how I-125 is not going straight ahead toward the Jessup sub. That lunar white restricting signal tells us he's been routed onto the Brunswick subdivision, taking the new route via Nehunta, then Jessup, and finally Savannah. Thus, the new double-track exit from Waycross is in operation. So far, so good. Now, I want to go back to Waycross this summer and see how this new project is paying off for CSX. I think it is really cool when railroads build new track and infrastructure rather than closing things and cutting back. So I'm going to keep a, an eye on this. Please hit the like button if you like this video. Please share it with your railfan friends and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already done that. Don't forget to put your comments in the comments section uh, down below. I read all of those. I try to reply to as many as I can. So until we catch up again somewhere out there on the high iron, this is Danny Harmon, out.